Hi there, this is Lee. And I'm talking again about the Green Party, um, the need to really do your research when it comes to discussions on the Green Party from publications that have been revealed to have a bias against third party politics, against progressive politics, and the Green Party. Um, such as the Brown Political Review. I found it online. Um, this is my first look at the Brown Political Review. And I'm looking at an article. It's written by Molly Naylor Kamiate. And there is an agenda here. And I'm going to go through the article and see if you can spot it <laughs> before I... Before I insert my own uh, thoughts in there, you might actually say, aha. Uh, but anyway, the title of the article is called School Boards, State Houses, and Stein, the Green Party, and Local Elections. And so, of course, it caught my attention because I've been looking at down-ballot candidates uh, frequently on this channel, um, the Bernie Kratz, as well as the Greens. Um, down ballot, meaning that I've gone to BernieKratz.net, um, looking state by state to see who the progressives are running for office down ballot, and then of course the Green Party's down ballot election database. I've gone through it and through it and through it, <laughs> frontwards and backwards. And so uh, the woman who wrote this article, her name is Molly. She also decided to discuss um, the Green Party and down-ballot candidates. According to her, um, the Green Party uh, has been focusing on the uh, presidential candidate um, and neglecting the down-ballot candidates. And this is um, a meme. It's a truth universally unknown. It's something that people say because they've heard it before enough times to where they think, oh, it must be true because everyone's saying it. Um, it's along the lines of the Ralph Nader started the Iraq war uh, meme that's been shouted out and repeated to the point that people believe and they don't have all the facts. And so Molly, she's a writer. And this is a political review. And so you would think that some sort of editorial control would be um, inserted into this article, but I spot it lapses right away. So um, Molly is saying that, um, that in, in particular, that um, the Green Party. It, she went to the um, uh, Green Party's database uh, and said and claimed that the database does not offer any numerical totals, only individual candidate profiles. The database offers numerical totals, that total being 279. It's at the top of the database. Um, so Molly missed that, uh, went ahead and wrote it in the article, did not proofread herself, and the editor didn't proofread her either. So it's 279, and that's been at the top of the database. Um, that number's been um, added up uh, as more down-ballot candidates have um, been confirmed with ballot access uh, for the Green Party. So it does. Um, that's the first discrepancy that I saw in this article. And she says that the Green Party is running over 100 candidates for state and local offices up for election this November. Um, again, it's 279, so that's more than twice uh, the number that you put in your article or uh, that Molly did. Um, she's saying that that number is in sharp relief when compared to the total 519,145 state and local candidate or, or local elect, locally elected officials in the United States. And yes, it is. Um, ballot access is prohibitive. We've seen the Green Party overcome struggles in states such as Nevada, where there was outright sabotage by the someone. 
will say. And then active fighting against the Green Party um, by the um, state election officials. Um, these are the same officials who rose up against Bernie Sanders during the primary. So there's, you know, efforts. And then, you know, she's uh, there's efforts to overcome um, these difficulties. Um, a record was set this year. Um, and still there are a record number of green, uh, Greens running down ballots, a number of states uh, with ballot access. So there's procedures, um, but even watching how Bernie Sanders was treated in Nevada, um, there is active campaign to sabotage uh, Green Party efforts to get on the ballot. Um, and then there's prohibitive uh, rules in states such as Oklahoma. There's lawsuits there. There's lawsuits in Nevada, South Dakota. There was things going on in Georgia. So, you know, <laughs> this is what we're working with. This is the system that we have. And so uh, the Green Party works within those rules. Um, and I will say um, that um, it is interesting that um, Molly also compares the Green Party to the... Um, Tea Party, um, saying that the Tea Party has done so much better um, at get candidates into state and uh, local offices rather than focusing on presidential um, candidates. The thing is, um, getting back to ballot access, Molly, of the political review, um, there are certain states where there has to be a presidential candidate on the ballot running for office. If there is no presidential candidate on the ballot, the state does not allow ballot access for any other um, candidate who wants to run down ballot on the same ticket with on the same party affiliation as a presidential candidate. In other words, in order for down ballot candidates to run in certain states, there has to be a presidential candidate on the ballot. These are the rules. Um, again, the Green Party is playing by multiple sets of rules, 50 of them, <laughs> 51 if you count um, Washington, D.C., and then some of the territories. And so um, we play by the rules. State and elected, state and local uh, down ballot candidates have to play by state and local rules. Um, it's the states that decide the electoral process, and some of them have these rules that must be adhered to in order to achieve ballot access, and that's one of the rules. So there has to be a presidential candidate. Much as it bothers you, <laughs> these are um, ballot access rules, and if you're going to be writing about that, you need to know it. Um, also, um, I did notice that, again, uh, Molly is comparing the Green Party to the Tea Party. Um, often the Tea Party is actually um, an offshoot of Republican Party. Uh, these are Tea Party Republicans. So she's comparing the Tea Party, um, a, a wing, a conservative wing of a major party, um, rather than comparing the Green Party to another third party, such as the Libertarian Party in this article. Doing that would mess up her narrative. So she doesn't do that, but the, the greater comparison is actually uh, the Libertarian Party, um, if we're looking for any sort of equivalency. The Libertarian Party has 147 candidates currently holding office. Um, they began, or they were established in 1971, and so they have 147 candidates holding office. The Green Party um, was established in 1984, about 13 years later, and so they have approximately 138 um, candidates holding office. Um, as it stands today, 138. Um, no, actually, I think the, the Libertarians have 143. 
And then uh, the Green Party has 138. So they're actually comparable. Uh, when we look at ballot access on um, petitioning requirements, um, the expense and the time and the human resources it takes to achieve ballot access. The Libertarians um, have had a 13-year head start. They also take corporate donations. Um, the Green Party does not take um, corporate donations. Um, they started in 1984, and they have about the same number of candidates in office down ballot. So focusing on the Green Party in this way, uh, without making a comparison to the Libertarian Party, just to show um, the the very uh, the difficulty with getting a third party on the ballot and then recruiting candidates to run on those parties, uh, uh, those ballot lines. I think that's a failure of this article. Um, and again, the Tea Party is a wing of the Republican Party, a major party. So this author is actually comparing the Republicans' uh, Tea Party to the Green Party. And that just makes no sense at all because the Republican Party has automatic 50-state ballot access, a corporate uh, fundraising structure, and a network that stretches back to the mid-19th uh, century when Abraham Lincoln um, helped bring the Republican Party from third-party status to major party status. So the equivalency is way off in this article. Uh, the numbers are off. Uh, the conclusions are off. Uh, the the narrative is way off. Um, I'll post a link in this description, and you can look at Molly's writing and see if you can also spot where she went wrong. Um, there's a little comment box here. You you can post a comment. Um, just read through and see what you think, and maybe you can um, send her a little information um, to enhance the editorial strength of this article. Good luck.